Let's be very clear. This was a deliberate act of intimidation following the release of an unflattering documentary about the country's leader. Yep. Since its release, there has been a concerted effort to prevent the documentary screening in India. Mm -hmm. Takedown notices issued to Twitter and YouTube have resulted in an India-wide ban of the documentary on these platforms and suppression of freedom uh, of expression in media and with journalists. When students from universities across the country have tried to organise screenings of the documentary on university campuses, dozens have been arrested, while others faced internet blackouts with power cuts. As the raids on the BBC offices commenced, a BJP spokesperson issued a statement, and I quote, the BBC indulges in an anti-India propaganda. India is a country which gives an opportunity to every organisation as long as you do not, their words, spew venom. These raids of all the parents, Madam Deputy Speaker, of a reprisal against the BBC, they have come at a time when independent media are being hounded more and more, and when pluralism is shrinking in India. Uh, not my words, but the, the assessment of reporters without borders. Strong words indeed. The justification of financial irregularities and tax evasion has been used to shut down more than 14,000 NGOs, people and organisations doing great work in India, and media outlets in the past six years. They have included, and these are household names, Amnesty International, Greenpeace, Oxfam. Madam Deputy Speaker, this has had a chilling effect on journalists, human rights advocates and religious minorities. These raids happened seven days ago. In, the time, in, in, the, in that time there has been silence, and I say this respectively, from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. No government statements have been issued, and, uh, and it has taken a UQ to encourage the, uh, the government to condemn such a blatant attack on press freedoms. I, uh, alarmingly, these raids, and it goes with this, happened hours after the government signed a trade deal with India. It's led to allegations that the silence from the government <coughs> is due to the proximity of this deal. In conclusion, can the Minister tell me and this House if the government intends to summon the Indian High Commissioner over this issue? As I said in my opening remarks, I can't comment on the specifics of the allegations um, because. Uh, it's the BBC that's cooperating with the Indian authorities on this matter and as, as the BBC has said, this is an ongoing investigation and it would be inappropriate for us, that's the BBC, to comment further. Um, my honourable friend made some also, also some important points about uh, implications for NGOs and for faith-based organisations too and he knows we continue to work with them on the ground and that's an important issue for him, it's certainly an important issue for me.